Hi, uh, Nick Hetrick. I'm from King, King County, and um, I am our technical lead on our CityWorks implementation and kind of handle the day-to-day -day administration. Um, get into our presentation. It's kind of about our basically our journey of implementing CityWorks and and um, where we came where we came from and where we're at now with it. Uh, so I was just going to give a general overview of King County uh, and basically kind of our a brief overview of our CityWorks implementation and history and what we have now. Um, and then I was going to talk about some of our programs that focus on stormwater. Uh, some of them are NPDES permit related. And those would be our water quality compliance programs. And then we also have a, a stormwater facility inspection program. And I'm going to be able to give time to get into some future enhancements planned. <clears throat> So King County, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty large county. Um, it's roughly size-wise, we're about the overall area. It's about the size of Rhode Island, the state. Um, we're we're the county entity, so we're not managing assets inside the incorporated areas, but which is a kind of a challenge for us because we do have urban islands, so our our assets are kind of spread out um, from anywhere from a very rural type land use or to a very uh, incorporated. Um, areas that are pretty close to the city of Seattle. Uh, we're a phase one jurisdiction, so, <clears throat> and our permit is managed by the Department of Ecology here in Washington. And we have roughly 2,070 stormwater facilities, and that would be ponds, vaults, um, proprietary things like media filters. And then we have a total of 39,000 catch basins in, in our um, jurisdiction and about 11,057 miles of closed conveyance. So that's just, just pipe only. We also have a significant amount of open conveyance as well. Um, and that would be more prevalent in our rural areas. So city works at King County. So we basically, um, my department was the, so far we're the most recent department to implement city works. Um, we previously had two other departments that have it and our road services department it has been using CityWorks the longest. And then our we actually have an airport, King County International Airport, and they're using a special build of CityWorks on their own instance. Um, since it's an airport, it's, it's a lot different than what um, we're doing kind of more in a public work setting. Um, <clears throat> and the reason why we in Stormwater Services decided to go to, with CityWorks was because it allowed us to leverage our already built out GIS inventory um, which took us a lot, of, a lot of time to standardize and collect all those assets. So CityWorks was a really good choice for us because we didn't actually have to modify our schema um, to use CityWorks. And prior, prior to having CityWorks, we kind of relied on um, a hodgepodge of applications and it was everything from Excel to access to custom .NET application. Um, and then some of it was just managed through email. So we've kind of actually compressed all these, all this, these data sets into CityWorks and GIS, basically. Um, so we've we started our implementation in, implementation in 2018. Uh, we actually did most of it in house, but we did have help from CityWorks, um, leveraging their Jumpstart program, which was was really good. Um, it kind of trained us how to manage the software, and then also helped us set up a couple templates. And then we were kind of off and running to do our own uh, requirements gathering and build out with our with our own staff and. By 2019, we were pretty much we, we that was our first go live um, for our first program. So it was a phased approach. So we were kind of going live with certain programs and shutting off legacy applications, and then bringing in new programs um, as they were built out in CityWorks. So right now we have about three uh, what we call domain admins, who are the main configurers and administrators of the CityWorks instance for stormwater services. And right now, in just stormwater services, not the other groups, we have about 80 plus daily users um, accessing the application. Um, so our first program that we actually went live with um, was our, our local source control inspection program. And this is basically a program that goes to um, not just businesses, but it could be commercial, anything kind of commercial, such as a multifamily resident, residential site or um, schools and even some county uh, properties that would fit into this program. And basically they, they used to run the program kind of using um, 
the inspector would go out with uh, carbon paper and that's what they would use to conduct their inspection. And then they would, um, when they were done, they would give, you know, the site manager or whoever was in charge of intaking that data from the inspection, um, the yellow copy of the carbon paper. And then the other stuff would get filed in a file cabinet. Um, so this was a good uh, actual program that we, we started to do first with our implementation. It didn't have a ton of um, inspection templates. So it was easy, easy for us to kind of take us um, one of our smaller programs and do the implementation and really learn how to get going with CityWorks. Um, so basically we, we, we were able to really um, replicate their workflow without disrupting um, their existing workflow too much by using CityWorks. So we basically used work orders as a kind of uh, inspection file for them. So that would, since they have multiple inspections, the inspection for that year would be held in a work order and then you'd have all the um, inspection forms that would include reinspections and stuff like that, um, all kind of wrapped up inside one work order package. And then the tasks were also something they needed as well. So that was really um, good for them to mimic their existing workflow. Uh, one of the good things about CityWorks was the scheduling. That was always kind of a problem. They never had a tool to do that. So at the beginning of the year, the program manager was kind of looking at all these, this historical data and trying to figure out, you know, what sites they need to go to. Um, and now that's, Kind of automated um, inside CityWorks because the next the next inspection will kind of be scheduled when they close out the current year's inspection, and it could be one, two, or three years, um, depending on the site's compliance history and some other factors um, that would determine that. And some other some other advantages of using CityWorks for this program is our inspectors basically can can generate that same carbon paper form of the inspection. They can generate that on site, and they can also they, we did end up getting printers because some people just, I mean, they like paper and um, that way they can hand them the inspection results on site or they actually can just send them an email um, with a PDF. And we did leverage um, SQL Server reporting services to build those forms. So it basically looks exactly the same. Um, we did have to do a little bit of integration by putting some buttons into the CityWorks forms. So the staff can, the inspector can kind of just click on that button and it'll generate the inspection report. And then also um, if there's a corrective action letter that needs to be sent, they can also generate that from CityWorks and it uses the inspection data. Um, for some of our MPDS compliance reporting, we're actually moving to the Esri Ops dashboards and we're using the data from CityWorks directly inside those dashboards and it'll give them um, basically the, the count of inspections they need to report and also, we've been looking into some other things like how many sites are getting initial compliance and stuff like that. So we're able to kind of visualize that more now using um, the inspection data with CityWorks and then combining it with Esri Ops dashboard. Um, so one of our other uh, programs that was kind of went along with the source control, it's the same group, um, was basically our water quality incident response. So this would be um, responding to things such as spills or um, polluting business practices. And we kind of get the intake through these from, uh, it could be from a service request or it could be from other county staff out doing an inspection and they see something. And then they then, then they submit a service request. Um, so that's kind of the service request is kind of where everything is, the intake is done and it's triaged to determine if we're gonna actually send somebody out for it. And in most cases we, we do for something like this. Um, while we were building this, the state actually came out, uh, Department of Ecology came out with a kind of a you shall do this type of data schema for these inspections or these, I guess you can call them inspections, um, basically what data that needed to be collected when you're responding to one of these. And that was actually good because this is we used that exact information to build our forms in CityWorks. Um, so basically we mimic that form in CityWorks. So it was really easy to do um, with the, the way you can design inspection forms in CityWorks along with the custom fields. And basically we were able to um, automate the export of that data and which is required by the permit. So we automated the export of that annually so we can just um, send that data off exactly how they're requesting it in the permit. And then that, um, <clears throat> that piece of compliance is done in a much quicker way than we were able to do before. Um, this was a new requirement, so we didn't have to do it previously, but it would have been really challenging with our old, old systems of how we were, were doing it with like access. Um, 
and it also would have taken us a lot longer to adapt. Um, the, uh, uh, we also had some SharePoint workflows, um, so basically generate some emails that we have to send to the state, kind of, and we were able to integrate that with CityWorks, so we can just send the email um, to the to our regulator, basically, and can do that from CityWorks using um, basically a report and um, what was collected during the inspection. So that actually we don't have to rely on the SharePoint workflow, which it was kind of good timing because those are actually getting retired and we have to kind of move away from those now. Um, and again, this was another thing where the, the inspectors in the field are actually enjoying the use of this because they're not having to come back and kind of um, take all their notes they took and compile like a Word document and then actually kind of take all their photos off their phone. It's all, it's all kind of once they do inspection in the field and take the photos, uh, which are done as attachments in CityWorks. Um, everything's pretty much done for them. They might do a review of it. Um, they do use CityWorks Mobile, so they, they might come back into the um, come back and look at it in CityWorks Office um, just to finalize and double check everything with these. And then, yeah, the last point I wanted to make is just that the the custom fields and the inspection forms make it the way it's um, configurable in CityWorks makes it easy to handle future regulatory changes, which we we pretty much know that they will there will always be something new coming. So this just makes it a lot easier for us to adapt than it did with our custom systems where we'd have to kind of like change code inside .NET and stuff like that. Um, and we're also able to do this in our own group, not have to put in a ticket to IT to have us build like a new module inside a custom application. And the, the county owned facility inspections are kind of our, uh, what I would call like a traditional stormwater management function um, and it kind of leverages all of the modules of CityWorks. So um, basically we, we have a, a facility inspection work order that has all of the facility assets, which facility is kind of just a, you know, a, it can be like a property that our pond is sitting on along with all the assets inside of it that we maintain. And we kind of track that and call that a facility. Um, so we basically use a work order as an inspection and then all of the inspection forms and assets are in that work order. And then any maintenance work that would be done would be child work orders off that. And then also automates the scheduling because once they close out the inspection work order, it'll generate the next one based on what inspection cycle that facility is on. Um, and that was something that our previous systems, the, the scheduling was really not able to be done in an automated fashion. Um, and our old systems didn't leverage GIS, which was kind of a problem. So we had kind of two asset registries. I mean, one was like a sketch-based type thing that they were using in the old systems and didn't have GIS. So now we have all of our assets in one place and it's it's better because all the inspectors and the people editing the data are all working off the same data set. <clears throat> and when we, when we did do this implementation of this program, um, it was actually pretty easy in CityWorks to replicate our existing functionality um, what we had in the old system. So that that was kind of nice. And then it just, it had a lot of value added stuff just by going to CityWorks um, that we didn't really have to put time into building, which is already there. Uh, and our inspection staff who do these inspections um, basically use CityWorks mobile in the field. And then they do come back in and still use the office interface to kind of finalize their inspections um, and kind of just do a, do a once over before they hand it off to uh, basically resubmit it back to the manager to um, approve any maintenance work that needs to be done. So there's kind of an approval workflow inside of CityWorks. And to help um, make this efficient with the staff, um, basically kind of develop inboxes for them so they can kind of see what inspections they have scheduled because um, our inspectors work across multiple programs in CityWorks. And it kind of gives them a nice way to organize their work um, by by having these dashboards so they can kind of see exactly what they need to do. And then also when certain things are due on certain timelines. Um, and then for the management, it's also easy to see if there's like a, a maintenance item that our maintenance crews haven't got to yet and they can um, make sure that gets done within the permit timeline. So we're not out of compliance basically. Um, and then we also were using the reporting services because um, the, the maintenance crews still actually do like a printout. So we did, um, integrate our reporting services with uh, using the XML um, to have a button in there that basically will open that work order and they can print them out as needed. Um, and they, li they, they like that still. We're, we're still, uh, the maintenance crews, we're looking at getting them iPads and then they probably won't be needing these as much, but um, they still 
they still kind of like the paper. So it's it's no extra work for us to have them have both options really. And on top of that, we also do a very similar but different is our commercial facility inspection program. Um, and this was previously done using a custom system, which didn't meet all the needs. So then we had um, basically some to augment it with, you know, uh, some files such as Excel. And um, I think there was also an access database involved and to try and uh, pick up the shortfalls that the in-house custom system couldn't handle. Um, but we actually were able to get all of this done inside CityWorks. And the difference between our commercial program is it's facilities that we don't own, but we do inspect them and they're maintained by a private entity. And the reason why we do inspect these is because our county has a surface water management fee discount program. So if um, a private entity that has like a stormwater flow control facility, a pond, a vault, um, bioswale, whatever, um, if they're if they're man maintaining that um, to the maintenance standards and they actually get a discount on their surface water management fee. And if when we do go and inspect them, if we find defects um, where it's not to the maintenance standard, then um, we basically would generate like a, a punch list saying these need to be done by the state in order to um, so you're still you're still able to get your your discount on your, sur your surface water management fee. Um, so <clears throat> basically, what what we had to do for this, it took a lot of the same same workflow from the um, county inspection program, except basically the the inspectors weren't having to generate maintenance work orders. Um, basically just having to do inspections, but we also needed to then use the data from CityWorks to build um, basically letters. And so we have uh, letters that say you're either in compliance and it's, you know, that's good and you're getting your discount. And then we have letters that say, okay, you weren't in compliance and here's the things you need to fix by this date and then return this letter back to us. So basically um, we use the reporting services to develop um, basically the same, same type of letters we had that they were used to seeing. So it wasn't a, a shock for the businesses um, and that was we were able to do in city works there were some slight differences in how we showed the punch list but um, overall it, it pretty much was the same um, <clears throat> and then we're all we are also able kind of to batch these the report generation um, at the end of the year when these need to be mailed out so it was a lot easier for the office staff to compile these letters and then everything's tracked in city works so we have another system that basically um, and kind of extract the data out of CityWorks, and then they can see which um, which properties are the discount should be applied to, and which ones are not going to be receiving a discount this year. Um, and then we haven't fully automated that yet, but that's coming in the future. But it's still better than what we had um, previously. It was just an Excel spreadsheet, but the one person was kind of managing, and now it's it's a systematic feature inside CityWorks, and it's um, it's definitely a lot easier for us to track the compliance. And see history and everything like that. Um, so yeah, this has been an overall. Cedric has been a, a big improvement for um, our commercial facility inspection program. And then our our public facing services, which essentially are um, it, it's our basically service requests for the most part. Um, it's kind of what we mainly interface with the public. Um, our uh, our department kind of handles um, surface water complaints, and that includes a, a, a various types of tasks. Uh, it includes things such as um, for that surface water management fee, we will go out and do um, impervious surface measurements. So we, we track those inside of CityWorks. Um, it also could be, we're tracking more of like our general um, technical assistance inquiries, and the water quality issues are also kind of covered in there. And then um, we're also using this to track localized flooding and stuff like that when we have during storm events, um, which we, and then we'll, it could be also related to our facility. So it's kind of nice to have the the service requests that somebody reported and then kind of see that where that went all the way through from sending out an inspector to actually what work was done to um, resolve that issue. Um, so this gives us a lot more capability to kind of analyze how effective our um, maintenance programs are and, and stuff like that to see if we're reducing the number of calls um, that we're getting, you know, when, we, when looking at our old data, um, it was kind of really hard to analyze, like, we get this call from the same place um, each year. And then also 
I mean, a lot of the, the staff who manage this might know this because um, they're just so familiar with it, but once they leave or retire, that information kind of goes out the door and somebody to start over again. So this is actually a really good way for us to track these problems that we've been getting reported from the public. Um, and right now we're, we just have a kind of a, um, uh, a form on our webpage that emails us directly with what the issue is, but um, we're looking into integrating that in the future with um, either maybe like a, a 311 app or something like that. Um, so that's, that will be a future enhancement. Um, and then um, one of the things that was nice about this is too, we, with um, some of the other agencies, we're able to share this on our, kind of have an Esri web app builder map, and we can use the, the EUR fun URL functionality inside of CityWorks that lets us, um, lets like other departments see this information, like of where our drainage complaints are, um, just in kind of a, in Esri map basically. Um, and those are for like staff that don't have CityWorks or, you know, maybe like even our public health or some, some other agency um, might want to look at this data and they don't have to like call us to get an extract they can and kind of see it in the map using the eurl functionality which is really nice um and then yeah uh i was just going to kind of briefly just this is kind of a continuous improvement so we're just you know now that we're invested in city works we kind of have a lot of projects that we want to continue to, to integrate this into um, other applications of the county and these are just kind of a small slice um, of what we're thinking and what might be done in the future um, the cctv program is definitely that that's definitely on the horizon and um, that'll be a really nice thing to tie into city works because then that opens up um, using operational insights and some of the other functionality that we're not quite leveraging yet but we will be in the future That is the end of my presentation, and I just wanted to thank everybody for attending. And my contact information is in this slide if you'd like to reach out and contact me about any anything related to stormwater and city city works. Mm -hmm.